Welcome to Stories and Songs, a series of interviews and research in the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Sophia Carbonara, and it's my great pleasure today to be talking to Molly Jones. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, my first question, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? This, uh, I know you sent me the questions ahead of time to think about, so I was thinking about it. And um, this question made me really happy because... I think most of the pivotal moments, pivotal events that I can think of um, relate to meeting people. It's about who I've met along the way and like people who've become friends and collaborators and who have really interesting ideas about music and about performance and about art that have inspired me. Like um, I'm thinking about, so um, I mean, I think one pivotal event for me is when I was in college, I happened to land at a school of music where there was a lot of different kinds of music going on and like an openness among a lot of people there to styles of music and ways of making music that are that not every conservatory or school of music would be open to so I think that was really fortunate and that's where I started learning about a lot of kinds of music I had never been exposed to growing up um and then from there I moved to Detroit um, where there are so many uh, amazing improvising musicians, jazz musicians. And I worked with James Cornish, who was very kind to kind of like bring me into the fold of improvising musicians in Detroit and encouraged me and, you know, gave me gigs and, you know, invited me to do things. And I think that gave me like a lot of confidence to continue doing that, that I could continue doing that. Um, yeah. So James Cornish was super important to me. Being in Detroit was... Um, I had the chance to study with Nicole Mitchell. That was pretty, uh, awesome. She is an amazing, I mean, I, I think I've just concluded she's like the best jazz flute player. She's just the very best one. So, and she's also just an inspiring human and a really creative mind. So I was super excited to get to work with her. Um, and then I think being in Chicago more recently has been really inspiring because there's so many people doing intermediate work that it just blows my mind and again it's just like meeting people who are doing inspiring things i love that that makes sense to me pivotal events are people people are pivotal. that's beautiful <laughs> uh my second question for you what obstacles have you had to overcome during your musical life and how have you dealt with them i think that there are kind of two kinds of obstacles there's like the kinds of obstacles that come from outside myself. And then I've also had a lot of like internal obstacle, like self obstacles that I've had to overcome. Um, like external obstacles. It's like growing up, I really loved music. I really loved jazz. I loved the saxophone. I didn't see a lot of women doing the kinds of things that I found inspiring and wanted to be doing. Um, and that was partly uh, like because of when and where I grew up and it's partly because there's still like not even close to reasonable gender representation in the professional jazz world um or at least the high profile professional jazz world that I like you know you see in downbeat or whatever um I think it's getting better but um I think like being from central Indiana like that was a little bit you know it's it's a little different even though I had music lessons and I loved them and I had great teachers like it's not quite the same as growing up in a place where you can go out and see music all the time um so in that sense it was an obstacle but um I also had a lot of like you know supportive family and all this so um mixed bag um a lot of my obstacles I think were like internal like I had internalized a lot of bias and like internalized like some kind of sense of low self-esteem or something like um you know I had this idea that like oh people like me don't do this and so I like I wasn't even willing to call myself a musician until I had already been performing off and on like and being paid for it for a number of years I was like well I'm not really a musician and then I had to stop and be like yes you are you get paid to play music for people like <laughs> So I think there was a lot of that kind of like internalized stuff I had to work out too. Um, this like cultural idea also that like, oh, music is like, um, 
it's like a luxury and it's like a waste of time and resources to spend time developing your art. I think that's another bias I'd kind of internalized. My third question for you. Do you have a motto or a personal philosophy that guides you or what advice would you share with younger musicians? Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's a motto, but like one thing I've been thinking about is like uh like jazz as like an art form based in like the world of great black music. It's like an expansive art form, I think. Like improvised music, jazz music, free jazz like it uh incorporates all different kinds of influences musically outside of music. Um it doesn't exclude musical or creative possibilities. It like responds to them. So I think like listening to all kinds of music and checking out all kinds of art and like letting it become part of your ecosystem. To me, that's, to me, I think that's a reflection of like a jazz ethic, I guess. Really beautiful. Mm. Um, my final question for you is for you to nominate uh, a song or album of your own creation um, for us to listen to and just tell us the story of that music or why you're sharing it now. Sure. Um, I think I would point to a track. I, I released an album in 2017 with a uh, septet and it's like sort of improvisation based free jazz kind of compositions. Um, and there's a track off of there that's actually a solo tenor sax track um, that I think, I don't know, it reflected where I was at musically at that point in time. It was actually like, it's a lot of timbral multiphonic tenor saxophone sounds and it was actually kind of what just came out after I had done a bunch of study of like late 20th century harmony and like classical music scores I was like I really want to learn something more about late 20th century music and then what came out is this like totally not harmonically structured noises um anyway that was kind of what I picked out um yeah uh and I'm glad to uh, share a link to that, if that makes sense. That'd be sick. Yeah, please add to me. Okay, I will do that. Um, well, thank you for your time and thank you for your wisdom. And making the time thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me.